This is why your Socomic tortoise is dying, and this is what to do about it. Hello, folks. Sam again from the farm with another informational video on Socomic tortoises. Boy, I tell you, there isn't a day goes by that I don't get a question about a, a, a customer asking, not even a customer, but just folks, even folks all around the world uh, have uh, uh, emailed me or text me, whatever, message me with problems. So I wanted to kind of make a general uh, informational video about what happens with sulcata tortoises, what the problems are with sulcata tortoises. M believe it or not, it's not that many different things that happen, why these little baby, and I'm talking the little baby sulcata tortoises, why they actually die. So you have these little tortoises, what's going wrong? Number one reason why these baby sulcata tortoises are dying is lack of UVB. People keep them too cold, they're not sunny, they don't get out in the heat. These guys don't do well when the temperature drops. You know, even into the 70s, you've got them in the house, you've got them in a fish tank, they're in an air-conditioned room inside your house. That's not the environment that these animals do well. They like it hot, they like it dry. So you have to create that. When I'm talking hot, we're, we're talking 96, 95. You have to give them some sort of a gradient. In their tank, you have a very hot spot. In the other side, you have a cooler spot, and you let them do the work as to where they're gonna put themselves. So. A lot of the problems based uh, are uh, calcium deficiencies because folks don't use good UVB bulbs or they start off with a good UVB bulb, but that bulb is no good after six months. You've got to keep replacing those bulbs. So uh, if you stick around later to the end of this video, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit how you can kind of x-ray your sulcata tortoise at home, get an idea if you're suffering from that calcium deficiency. So it's going to be something neat. Stay, stick around to the end uh, and take a look at that. So what, what else goes wrong with sulcata tortoises? If it's not UVB, if it's not, if it's not uh, lack of calcium, uh, and by the way, you can tell when you have a tortoise that is lack of calcium because he's going to be soft, it's not going to be hard. You know, e even at three inches, those are firming up nice. So if you have a sulcata tortoise that's soft and it's plastron drawn, moves around a little bit, lack of, UV, lack of UVB, lack of calcium, and that's the, that, there's where the problem really is. The other thing that these guys die from, respiratory infections. Again, same thing, you're keeping them too cold. It's gotta be hot, it's gotta be sunny. These guys are active. When you have them in your environment and that light is on, they're, they're running around, they're very active. They come, they pack the food and everything. They just don't sit in the corner. That animal is sitting in the corner, not moving around, not coming out to eat, he's sick. That's Silcata's. They're very active little animals. They'll run all around. If he sits there, he's sick. And he could have a respiratory infection. These guys get respiratory infections pretty easy if the conditions are right. The conditions would be right when it's cool and it's wet. They don't do well in cool and wet. So what you've got to do is you've got to have hot, dry, 86, 96 degrees. Give them a gradient to go back and forth. That's what they need to keep their metabolism up. That keeps their immune system up. That's what drives them to eat. If you get a respiratory infection, it's going to be pretty easy to see. You're going to have some mucus coming from the nose. Do that little trick you can see in some of my other videos. Push that head back in the shell and see if it produces mucus. Sometimes you can turn them upside down, push their head in, and see if, you, if, they're, if their nostrils are producing mucus. If they are, you probably have a respiratory infection. And the way to treat respiratory infections, you've got to go to your vet and you've got to get antibiotics. They can also do an x-ray at the vet to determine if an animal has uh, a respiratory infection, especially on those smaller guys. You don't need to do all the blood tests. You don't need to have them scoped. You don't need a CAT scan. You know, it, you, you, you can get what you need pretty much with an x-ray. I, I don't even think you need to do blood work because, because these guys aren't, these guys don't have some kind of weird disease. They either have a, they have a calcium deficiency, they have a respiratory infection, or they're constipated. And that's what we're dealing with. So, you know, get with your vet, somebody that's going to work along with you and determine, you know, how you're going to treat that animal. If you've got a respiratory infection, great drug, ceftazidine. Uh, it works really well. And if, you, if you've caught it soon enough, then he'll recover. These guys are little, so when they get sick, it's hard for them to kind of fight back. It's not like dealing like a big tortoise like this one was. So, uh, again... The other things that they have, sometimes they get constipated. And again, when they get constipated, really is because we, they, they, something went wrong with them adjusting to the gradient, adjusting to the temperatures. Their GI slows down. They get under 55 degrees. Digestion stops. Peristalsis stops. 65. 
degrees and you know um maybe they only have about 20 percent of their of the speed of their digestion that they should have so heat is really important to these guys that's that's what that's what drives them okay so things that you can do think you if you if you have a tortoise and uh he's not eating you can tube him i have a few other videos you can go check them out on my channel showing you how to tube a little baby tortoise like this how to get that food into him use criticare use, use a good Food. You can even supplement Criticare, uh, which you can find on Amazon, which is the critical food that we tube feed them with. And like I mentioned before, we, we have those videos on the website, show you how to do that. You can hydrate them. Hydrating is real important. You should be soaking once a day, 30 minutes. But also you have sub-Q hydration. And I have videos that show you how to do that too. This is where you're going to get ringers and you're just going to inject in sub-Q every day. And you're going to get that hydration up because that's what that, that that's one of the also driving forces that allows these animals to recover. If they're not hydrated, their kidneys aren't filtering out what they're filtering out, and they start to crash. So you've got to get hydration. You got to get antibiotics. The other thing that can mess them up is parasites. Now, you probably don't have worms. These animals, if we're talking little tiny animals like this here, and you've kept them inside or they're in some sort of a, a, a sterile environment, you just don't you don't typically see worms in little baby tortoises like this. If you have dirty plates, if the, if, the, if the cages are being cleaned and you have stool laying around, you could end up with protozoa. If you're gonna end up with a protozoa infection, this is what you do. You gotta get that sample to the vet. And you're gonna have them check for stools, for the stool. You're gonna have them check for worms. You're gonna have them check for protozoa. You'll find worms three days later in that stool. Protozoa, within about an hour, depending on how wet it is, that protozoa is gone. So you've got to try to get to the vet fast. He's got to know you're coming. And what you have to do is get that fresh sample to the vet so he can check the protozoa, which is going to die, you know, within a, a couple of hours. The other thing you can do, uh, protozoa is treated with uh, flagell. Metronidazole. You can actually find that. The dogs are going crazy. You can actually find that on Chewy. You're going to need it. You can actually treat them with that, with that flagell and treat that protozoa. It's also a little bit of an appetite stimulant, so that, that's good as well. The other thing you can do is you can inject if with calcium, if they're having a calcium deficiency. Like I mentioned earlier, please stay around to the end of the video. I have a, a, a neat demonstration for you how to tell if your animal is suffering from a metabolic bone disease or a calcium deficiency. A little test that you can do at home, kind of figure out where, where your tortoise is, how bad he is, and what we ha and, and how, how we may be able to treat him. Okay, so... Uh, some of the symptoms that you might see, some of the symptoms we're going to be looking for, if you want to come in a little bit, Mario, here, is you're going to check the hardness of that shell. So that's a nice, that's a nice hard tortoise for an, a, a tortoise this age. Also, look how strong he is. I can't pull those legs out. Also, look at his legs. You see how nice and round this area is here? That, that's because there's a lot of uh, tissue under there, just like, just like my arm is round here. When you see something that's... Uh, that's uh, that's starving this area isn't around anymore it gets flat because that tissue isn't there so he's got a nice hard shell i don't see any mucus production but what i do is as i actually use his legs to push his head in there and i'm looking at his nares i'm looking at his nose and there is no discharge from his nose so i don't think this tortoise has a respiratory infection he feels nice and hard i can't begin to pull his legs out so he's pretty strong He's active and he moves around. This tortoise doesn't appear to be sick. So the symptoms that would be if he was sick, a lot of times their eyes get sticky, their mouth gets dry because they're dehydrated. So you see they see them there sitting in the corner. They won't come out. They won't eat their food. Their eyes are sticky shut. Sometimes you see them with their mouth and you can see them. Their, their mouth is sticky because their mucus is thickening up because they're dehydrated and maybe they're getting a respiratory infection. That's what starts to happen. When you get that respiratory infection, then you'll start to see the, the bubbling at the nose and you'll start to see a discharge from the nose. Sometimes the nose and nares get clogged up and then start the bacterial infection and you'll actually see the bacteria eat that flesh, eat the ends of their nose and everything like that. So, you know, that's some of the other symptoms that you see and you see it in their behavior. They don't eat. If they're not eating, 
then something's wrong because they're going to come out and eat. They don't get lazy. They don't want to not eat today. That's not the way that they are. So they're always happy. They're always out there. And if they're not doing that, then something is wrong. And it can be as simple as you, ju you just have it too cool or you're not using UVB. If you're not using UVB on these guys, three months. I'll give you three months and then these guys are, are, are in big trouble with, without UVB. If they're outside, that's great. They're outside. If they're outside, you have you have a tendency to have more types of uh, parasitic infections, like I was mentioning before, uh, protozoa. If they're inside, then you probably have more of a problem with uh, metabolic bone disease, with the light deficiency, with the UVB deficiency. There's where that problem is. So again, when we're talking about symptoms here, they should be producing stool. They're eating and they're producing stool. You should see nice little stool pellets. So if you're going along and you, you know, he's eating, but you don't see any stool, something's starting to go wrong. These guys get constipated, like I was mentioning earlier in the video. Uh, you can soak with a little pan of water. You can use Epsom salt, follow the instructions. It's a great little laxative. You keep that, that water a little warm. You soak them 20, 30 minutes, let them drink the water. These guys always like to drink the water. I only keep it about halfway up their shelf. Let them put their head down and drink the water. That way if they flip over, they don't die. So again, talking about symptoms, those, those really are the big symptoms. Look at the stools. If you're seeing watery stools, you're not seeing stools, you're seeing diarrhea type stools, have some sort of a GI situation going on. Very, very, very possibly could be para, parasites. So again, we treat parasites with a panicure for worms and we treat them uh, for protozoa. Metronidazole. Or flagellum, it's the same thing. Okay, folks, so then in summary, here's what we're looking at. Uh, they, they get metabolic bone disease, they get respiratory infections, they get parasitic infections, uh, worms and, and protozoa, and, and they get constipated. So those are most of the things that you deal with. You don't have some sort of elaborate heart disease. They don't have some sort of elaborate liver disease. They, they, they might have kidney disease, but that's from being dehydrated. Now, you will, you will see those problems. So that's what you concentrate on. I, I, I emphasize a little time. Get a working relationship with your vet where you can bring your small animals in there, have him work with you, have him help prescribe those drugs, get you started, show you how to do that stuff home. Remember, I have videos that you can uh, access on the website where I give a lot of uh, demonstrations on actually how to tube them and hydrate them and stuff like that. So you can do that, you know, all of that aftercare work that you, that you should do when the vet sends you home. That way you don't drive your bill crazy. That, you know, if you're just going to bring your tortoise there and you can't help yourself at all, and they got to keep it there for two weeks, well, then you can expect to have a, a large bill. So uh, these, are the, these are the things that, that you're dealing with. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you a little video that I made. I call this my home x-ray. It's great for diagnosing metabolic bone disease in your sulcata tortoise. Check these videos out, how amazing it is to be able to use this tool and uh, get some more information as to maybe what's wrong with your sulcata. I hope you like those videos. Cool, folks, here I want to demonstrate um, how to tell if these tortoises have a calcium deficiency. So I have here two African sulcata tortoises, and I'm just gonna take a simple flashlight test here. And you see, you can see a little bit of, you can see a little bit of red, some of the vascularization in there, you see a little bit. Um, and then if we turn them over, it doesn't really penetrate the bottom of that shell. And now on, this tortoise, which physically feels soft. Again, here we see, we can actually start to see, I can see this, maybe the kidneys there. No, well, that's probably, that's probably just something in the GI system, but I can actually see different parts through the shell. And take a look at this when you go through here. Now it's very easy to see through the bottom of his shell. And then we can actually come from the other side here and look at this. So from the other side, we can see his GI system. We can see his heart and his liver there. This is a decalcification of the shell and the bones and it's called metabolic bone disease. Okay, folks, I hope you liked that video. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, there's a lot of other videos I have there about uh, the care of tortoises. 
Uh, there's actually a playlist that you can click and look through some of those medical videos that I have provided before. If you like my videos, please subscribe, click like, hit the bell, whatever it is. I appreciate the support. It gives me an opportunity to help more folks. Take care, everybody.